डियर आचार्य जी प्रणाम इन चैप्टर 15 वर्स 3 अष्टावक सेज दिस अवेयरनेस ऑफ द ट्रुथ मेक्स एन इलोक्वेंट क्लेवर एंड एनर्जेटिक मैन डंब स्टूपिड एंड लेजी सो इट इज अवॉइडेड बाय दोज हुज एम इज एंजॉयमेंट आचार्य जी अष्टावक इज पॉइंटिंग एट व्हाट काइंड ऑफ डलनेस स्टूपिडिटी एंड लेजीनेस will the lower of truth become dull stupid lazy surely it has to be something else is it not so that rather the people seeking enjoyment are dull and stupid thank you with love and gratitude to the from pune when ashtavak says dumb that has to be read as an absence of the tendency to be verbiose ashtavak says that truth turns the eloquent man dumb dumb not in the sense of mental inadequacy dumb in the sense of disappearance of the tendency to be profligate with words we want to speak a lot right and why do we want to speak a lot because when we speak a lot it convinces us that we know because when we speak a lot it convinces us that we exist the knower of truth abides in his deep self assurance he has no need to insecurely boast so the man of words becomes a no man of silence hmm? those who had an itch in the lips find now they have a twist in the tongue the very need to keep expressing through words diminishes i repeat it hmm? the very need to assure oneself that one is knowledgeable and existent diminishes the very need to relate to others through the verbal root diminishes similarly the clever man ashtavak says becomes stupid a stupidity here should be read just as a healing of the tendency to act cleverly a stupidity here is not the opposite of cleverness stupidity here is the absence of cleverness pradeep ji this is the thing with words words operate in the 
dualistic domain it becomes difficult to convey the non dual truth through them ashtavakar could have just said a clever or not clever probably that would not have driven home the point so he instead chooses a more provocative word he says stupid why does he say stupid why doesn't he simply say that the clever man will not remain clever anymore why does he say that the clever man will turn stupid by the touch of the truth why does he say so he says so so that pradeep ji asks acharya ji this question if he doesn't provoke you why will you ask this question if and if you won't ask this question how will ashtavakra become clear to you if ashtavakra just says that the eloquent man will lose his eloquence he will say fine he was eloquent he is not eloquent anymore it doesn't hurt you so much but when ashtavakra tells you that truth turns the eloquent man dumb then you are provoked hurt you feel offended because you too call yourself a seeker of the truth and you don't want to call yourself dumb and ashtavakra is saying that the truth will turn the eloquent man dumb ah rather ouch so a question arrives and that gives me an opportunity to be eloquent <laughs> ashtavakra is not against eloquence ashtavakra is against the compulsive tendency to seek security in words ashtavakra himself is so very eloquent and here is your acharya ji eloquently coming forth on ashtavakra truth does not cause or diminish a particular kind of behavior truth just dissolves your insecure tendencies once you are not insecure you may go right or you may go left it doesn't matter much and if you remain insecure then whether you go right whether you go left it won't make a difference getting it hmm? similarly he says truth turns the energetic man lazy truth turns the energetic man lazy and again that offends truth turns the energetic man lazy not only lazy pankaj has done well to point out Necessary. you become the lord of the lazy people shiromani amongst the lazy people you become numero uno now many people are put off they say if this is what spirituality does to us why should we turn spiritual at all and that's exactly what ashtavakra wants to do to put you off you are an unnecessarily burning flame with a lot of smoke and very little light or purpose 
he wants to put you off hmm? where is all your energy coming from you are burning and that's where your energy is coming from have you seen when you are afraid how energetic you become that's where your energy comes from ashtavak is saying the man of truth loses all such energy because he is not afraid anymore have you seen when you are jealous how energetic you become have you seen when you are missing a train or a flight how energetic you become have you seen when you are angry how energetic you become ashtavak is saying the man of truth loses all these energies these are the energies of devil he instead becomes lazy what does ashtavakra mean by laziness he means the man of truth loses the motivation to secure himself or gain for himself for himself now he is totally lazy because the self is self secure there is no need to work for it does that mean that the man of truth does not work at all no the man of truth does not work for the self he rather works by the self and in the self it's a different dimension of energy it's a different quality of energy it is pure energy uncontaminated it is not energy directed at someone it is not energy directed at a purpose it is just energy expressing itself for its own sake the man of truth is not energetic because his energy his race his dive his plunge will fetch him something he is energetic because it is great to express energy his energy is the energy of a little bird playing around like this see no purpose you see even these little birds might probably have some latent purpose maybe if you investigate deep you will find out that they are also looking for some food but the man of truth has no purpose at all his energy is free energy do you get this free energy a lot of energy but free and purposeless works a lot for the sake of working does a lot for the sake of doing he doesn't work or do to reach or gain or achieve all achievement has already happened he is already home but he still works because working is good fun so he is not a compulsive worker there is no compulsion upon him anymore he retains the freedom to rest and he is always restful where 
where rest must be. As for the body, the body must work and the body keeps working. It is not the mandate, the constitution, the prakriti of the body to keep resting. You have hands so that they work. And when you work, rest comes on its own, does it not? You need not say that there must be a balance between rest and work, no? Hands must work and if hands work, they get tired and if they get tired, they sleep and then there is rest. Work and rest are one. Rest is automatically guaranteed to the one who works. The harder you work, the deeper is your sleep, is it not? Hmm? So, as far as Prakrati is concerned, rest and work go together. And as far as you are concerned, the real one, the truth, your nature is nothing but rest. You abide in your nature and don't even think of providing rest to the hands. The one who is resting is anywhere resting. The body is not meant to rest. So, don't get alarmed, Pradeep Ji. Ashtavakra is not asking you to let your hands turn lazy. The hands must keep working. The disquiet within, the restlessness within must get extinguished. I ask you, can't you work energetically without restlessness? Or do you necessarily need a chaos within, a cyclone within, unrest within to work at all? Is it necessary? The Buddha used to quote three types of horses. Hmm? Coming from his palatial background, it seems he was fond of horses. So he would say that the worst type of horses are those that move only when spanked. And that's how our energy rises. It rises upon spanking. When there is trouble, we work. When the horse is spanked, it runs. We work to avoid trouble. For us, work is trouble. Only when there is trouble do we work. So most people necessitate trouble in order to work. If there is no trouble, they won't work at all. So they bring their situations deliberately down to the point of trouble. Now when there is trouble, they will be forced to work. It's deep, deep slavery. The fellow knows that no gentle methods will work upon him. So, 
सो ही प्लॉट अगेंस्ट हिमसेल्फ He turns his situation bad and worse to the extent that he must now necessarily rise into action. But Pradeep ji, is that really? need it is it not possible that one works with some dignity is it necessary that the horse runs only when spanked hmm is it necessary that only fear and greed and insecurity and nonsense of all kinds are able to elicit some movement from you can't you work in joy hmm and buddha would say that the highest kind of horses are the ones who run when just whispered to run you need to give them the slightest pointer and they move the worst kinds require to be beaten up those of the middle kind required to be shown the whip show the whip to them bring the whip close to them they then sense the danger and then they move and then there are those of the top quality you just go close to them touch them maybe gently massage them and they know that it's time to run they don't require to be slapped or whipped atma is dignity those who live by the true self live a life of dignity those who live by their falsenesses live a life devoid of all grace all dignity no respect no glory is available to them the only song they dance to is the song of whip lashes otherwise they do not know any music any dance do you want to dance to this gentle breeze or do you want to dance to the music of whip lashes tell me that's the truth that's the atma that ashtavakra talks of desirelessness leads to the atma desirelessness leads to the atma atma leads to desirelessness do not ask where to begin because you are in middle of that which you keep 
beginning and ending. You are asking for a starting point. Does desirelessness lead to Atman? Do I begin with desirelessness? Had you been stationary, I would have told you how and where to begin. But are you stationary? Haven't you already begun? If you have already begun, no point asking where and how to begin. Look at how you keep beginning. Look at how all beginnings keep ending. Where is desirelessness? There are only desires, right? Acknowledge that. These are nice words. They should encourage us to look at our current state. Desirelessness must encourage you to look at desires. Hmm? Desirelessness by itself is nothing. Ours is the world of desires. We have been so convinced of the idea of the desire-action duality that we find it impossible to conceive that there can be action without desire. Whenever we have seen, everywhere we have seen just one thing. When a man is desirous, he acts. And when there is no desire, then there is no action. So the desirelessness that you talk of will scare you away. Because the mind has only seen the desire action causality. To the mind, only this exists the desire action causal link. The mind says, where there is desire, it causes action. The more you will talk of desirelessness, the more difficult it will become for you. To look at your desires. There is a reason. As long as there is the body, it must act. Zero action means death. And if desire means action to the mind, if desire means action, desirelessness means actionlessness. And to the body, actionlessness is death. The more you will talk of desirelessness, the more you will make desirelessness impossible for you. The body does not want to die. The psyche is even more afraid of dying. And you are talking of Desirelessness. The mind says if no desire then no action and no action means death. Why do you want to make it difficult for you? Ashtavak is Ashtavak. 
why don't you begin towards ashtavakra from where you are ashtavakra is wonderful but from where would you go to ashtavakra you are neither ashtavakra nor janak you are parmeshwari and parmeshwari must start from parmeshwari Parmeshwari from must start from where she is, and where Parmeshwari is. From where Parmeshwari is, all that can be seen is the desire, action, causality. Desire causes action, and action is life. So desire is life. Desirelessness, therefore, is death. you may keep saying anything the body and the mind do not want death so rather look at desires desires are there already there hmm the world is so afraid of true spirituality because of words like desirelessness the fellow says i don't want to become desireless if i enter spirituality i'll become desireless i'll have no desires left and that's very scary to say let alone experience you go and tell somebody come i'll give you desirelessness how likely is he come to with you Li- likely to come with you hmm does the spiritual man have desires does the spiritual man not have desires the answer to both is mu desires are there but the spiritual man does not have them so the answer is both yes and no does the spiritual man have desires yes and no does the spiritual man not have desires yes and no in your case what happens is that there is an identification with what you are wearing so if the kurta is brown you start saying i am brown you have a great identification with the mind so if the mind has desires you start saying i have desires in the case of the spiritual man the natural man the mind does what it must and the self remains where it must there is no conflation no identification so are desires there yes. yes does the spiritual man have desires no so the answer is yes and no desires are there but i don't have them would the desires be actionated and fulfilled again yes and no some of the desires might indeed get fulfillment i want water i may get water in a limited sense the desire has been fulfilled but have i been fulfilled no the desire has been fulfilled i have not been fulfilled i am always fulfilled 
Did you get this Parmeshwari? Are desires there? Yes. Do I have desires? Did the desire get fulfilled? Probably yes. Did I get fulfilled? Already. No. Sometimes the desire will get frustrated also. The mind does not get what it wants. That's rather the norm. So did the mind get frustrated? Yes. yes. Did I get frustrated? No. Desirelessness is not the opposite of being desirous. It's something different. Hmm? <laughs>